In this video, I'm going to compare these three pH testers specifically for the purpose of testing the pH of fermentations. Two are digital pH meters and one is a paper test strip. I will review their futures including pros and cons of each so that you can make an informed decision on which is best for you. And just an FYI, I own all three of these and I have used each for an extended period of time. So my review is based on actual experience which I think is the best type of review. First I will compare these two digital meters before I integrate the pH paper test strips. The all yellow one on the left I'll refer to in this video as the basic pH meter. The yellow and white one on the right I will refer to as the upgrade pH meter. The basic meter can be used with liquids so it is perfect for testing the brine of a vegetable fermentation, kombucha, vinegar, and other fermented beverages like homemade fermented sodas and milk. The probe of the basic pH meter is tucked in a protective shell. This is because the probe is incredibly delicate. If it comes in contact with anything other than pure liquid, it will cause the meter readings to malfunction becoming sporadic. Once the meter goes wonky, a new meter will need to be purchased. I speak from experience. The probe of the upgrade pH meter is exposed. It's designed to be able to come in contact with the same kinds of liquids as the basic meter, but additionally with substances such as bread dough, jams and sauces, honey, syrups, yogurt, kefir, and even soft solid foods like cheese for you cheese makers out there. Therefore, the glass of the probe is much more durable and can handle contact with substances without breaking or going wonky. Each digital pH meter requires calibration beforehand with three buffering solutions and the ease of the calibration process for both I would call equal. I didn't find one to be easier or more difficult than the other. The calibration instructions for the basic meter are, well, basic and can be a bit confusing since they're not well written. The instructions for the upgrade pH meter are laminated, plus in color and have better written step-by-step -step instructions. However, if you've never calibrated before, the process can seem a bit intimidating no matter how good the written instructions are. So to help in this department, I have a how to calibrate instructional video for each meter that will walk you through the process step by step. You can find the links for those videos in the description. An added note on the meters, I have found the upgrade meter to hold an accurate calibration months longer than the basic, which by the way you can save the pH solutions from the calibration process to use again later for quicker and easier calibration if you suspect the meter needs a tune up down the road. For those who have issues in the eyesight department, display of the pH reading matters. The color matching can sometimes be challenging especially if you don't see colors well or at all in the case of color blindness. Sometimes even with good color vision, the result of the pH test color is an in-between shade that doesn't seem to exactly match the color code selections. The basic meter has a digital display that removes the guessing out of color matching. That's the number one reason why I switched from the paper test strip to a digital meter. The basic meter is not backlit. For my 81 year old mother who has poor eyesight, this is a deal breaker for her, but typically isn't for most people and my eyesight falls under the average category and I don't have a problem reading its digital display. The upgrade meter however does have a digital display with a backlight for very easy reading. Like I mentioned, I don't have trouble reading the basic meter, but even so I really like the backlight. It makes the display triple times easier to read even with good eyesight. Let's compare using the pH meters with some vegetable fermentations. The basic meter works great testing the pH of brine so long as there's enough brine to adequately submerge the probe as shown here. This is the brine of a red sauerkraut I made. The upgrade pH meter can also easily test the brine as shown here. And for the paper test strips, quickly dip in and out and compare the color the paper turns to to the color legend on the inside of the test packet. Sometimes in a vegetable fermentation, the vegetable will suck up the brine and create a dry batch. I also call it disappearing brine. Certain vegetables have an affinity to do that, such as sauerkraut and shredded carrots. It's not a guarantee, but it can happen. Here are some examples of how this can affect pH testing. This sauerkraut has a complete case of disappearing brine. FYI, it's not a bad thing, and if you want to learn more, you can find a video link in the description where I go into further detail. 
The shredded carrot and cauliflower fermentation also inhaled much of its brine, but not as much as the sauerkraut. In this case, the upgrade pH mater will be able to do the job because that probe can be inserted right into the sauerkraut to take a reading, whereas the basic pH mater cannot. The pH paper will get the job done too. My hands are freshly washed and clean, and I can reach in there and press the paper against the cabbage to pick up some moisture to activate the paper test strip. Next, compare the color of the paper end to the color code chart. The color isn't always easy to identify exactly. In this case, it looks between a five and a four. Let's test the carrot and cauliflower fermentation the same way. This one has a little more liquid, so a better reading can be taken, which makes it easier to compare the color code chart. This looks to best match the pH for color. This sauerkraut brine level is in between. With the weight still in the jar and just a shallow bit of brine there, the upgrade pH meter can nab a reading and the paper strip would also not have a problem nabbing a reading with just this little bit of brine. To use the basic meter in this situation, the weight would need to be taken out first for there to be enough brine below in order to adequately submerge the basic meter. As for cleaning, because the probe sensitivity is different for the meters, the only way to clean the basic meter is to run it under water after each use. Do nothing to it except run it under water, not even soap. If you use any type of device to reach in there to scrub the probe, you will ruin the meter. The probe cannot handle contact and it will not read accurately ever again, even if you recalibrate it. I learned that lesson and had to buy a new one, so rinse in water only. The upgrade meter is designed for contact with more than just liquid, and the probe is exposed, so one, it is easier to fully clean with simply water rinsing, and two, I have found the glass of the probe to be more durable and therefore less susceptible to instant breaking if touched like with the basic meter. The instructions advise against this, but if for some reason you absolutely needed to, you could use your fingers with a little soap so long as you're very, very gentle. No cleanup is needed with the pH strips. To store, just keep the packet away from any moisture. With digital pH meters, it's important that the probe does not dry out for an extended period of time in order to continue working properly. For the upgrade probe, inside its cap at the very bottom is a little gray sponge. Keep that sponge damp by once in a while getting it wet. Then after rinsing the probe, place the cap on. The probe will be kept moist by the sponge. If you don't plan on using the meter for an extended period of time, keep it stored in its protective box and set a reminder on your phone to re-moisten the probe in a couple of weeks. Let's say if the probe is left for months without re-wetting, it will dry up and no longer work, so keeping moist is important for longevity. The basic meter probe also needs to remain moist. So rinse with water, then put the cap on with the meter still wet because the basic meter does not come with a sponge inside the cap. If the meter is used at least once a week, it should be just fine. But if it's going to be an extended period of time before it gets used again, set a reminder on your phone to re-wet the probe in a couple of weeks. If left dry and unused for too long, it probably won't work anymore when you try to use it months down the line. Keep the meter stored in the case it comes with. The basic meter has a more minimal storage case than the upgrade meter, which is a nice and convenient feature. How about the price? On my website, I have an Amazon affiliate store where I have all three of these pH testers posted, as well as links in the video description. Keep in mind Amazon prices change, but as for today, the paper pH strips are the most economical at around $5.99 for a four pack. The basic meter is the most economical of the digital meters at around $12 and the upgrade meter costs the most at around $54. However, oftentimes I see an $8 coupon on the Amazon page, which helps bring the price down. I know I heard many of you gasp at the price, and I did too when I was first pH meter shopping a couple of years ago. Here's my advice. If you are new to fermentation and aren't sure if you and fermentation have a future together, then go for economical. And or if your budget is tight, go for economical. You can always grow into upgrades later. However, if it is affordable to you today, save yourself the hassle of the lesser quality basic meter and go for gold with the upgrade. 
Like I mentioned earlier, I used the basic meter for two years before upgrading, and I went through about five of them in those two years because they are, well, to be honest, cheaply made. But it's okay to start where you need to start. Whichever pH reader you choose, paper strips, basic meter, or upgrade meter, it will get the job done. All the best to you in your decision making, and remember, you can find the links in the description below. And be sure to check out my channel for all kinds of fermentation recipe videos that are delicious and probiotic rich. Bye for now.